Hello, so this is the top 10 things I wish I knew before I started playing the game. But since we have a wipe every 6 weeks, we can always use more information and tips, right? Right. Uh, before I start, I just want to give a warning. I've seen a lot of guides, a lot of videos, a lot of tips, a lot of information about the game that is just wrong and it will give the people a very bad experience and it will also make them burn out on the game. So I recommend you just play the game at your own pace because this game has the... There's a huge amount of quality of life features, meaning you can, you can reverse, redo a lot of the stuff you make. For example, you can move your base, you have an easier way to edit it, you can also recycle the stuff you build for materials or for items. Anyway, don't worry too much about it and don't over farm or over grind, which is also team number one. Don't worry about base building, this is more than adequate for end game and PvP and whatever else you need. Don't worry about making money, the energy links, you'll get enough of it in the end game or at the end game. Don't worry about grinding for the end game materials because you can actually get them pretty easy if you just do certain quests or certain things. Don't over farm or over grind, especially in the early game because that's a bad way of actually going about the game. My recommendation would be to just do all of the locations with their objectives and if you haven't done let's say you're level 50 and you haven't done Rift Anchor Highland, go over there and do it. The words you get there are very very good. So complete all of those, complete all of the exclamation mark quests, complete all of the tasks you have, including the ones from the journey, including the ones from the season stuff. And that's the best way to get progression and some of the other stuff you will need. As you can see, Star of Chrome, very useful, right? Right. I reached level 15, I could upgrade all of my gear to max calibration without any grinding, so that's the big deal. Reaching level 50 is easy, but you can over farm and have still a lot of stuff to do before you need the experience. So yeah, don't worry about it. Zero grinding, maxed out everything I needed to maxed out. Again, this is only for a build. If you have multiple builds, you'll have to grind a lot. Okay, number two. There is a deviant for almost everything. You can have the beaver for wood, the diggy for minerals. I think you should have about five diggies because they'll give you very cool stuff like the iron ore and some of the other materials. There's one for a faster cooking and also bonus to that. A big dinosaur. There is also one that I don't have. It's a bunny that will hunt for you. It will bring you meat and hide. Anyway, the idea is that you will have a deviant for everything, including increasing the power generated by your generator and some of the other stuff. I will just link an interactive map that will show you the locations of all of these deviants and yes, you can basically manage your base in such a way that you never have to grind or farm. And by the time you reach the endgame you also have the drills and some of the other stuff that will basically be an instant instant mineral wipe so you'll get everything in a split of a second. You are going to have a much easier time if you just learn more about the game instead of just headbutting the game. <laughs> Tip number 3 Kettle Specialization. Now this is probably enough information for 10 hours but I'll just make it short and if you want if you have any questions just ask me. So every every season will have a number of limited specializations, right? They can range from very good to very bad and they can also help you a lot. Some of the stuff you'll get will be good in the early game, some of the stuff will be good in the end game, some of the stuff will be good always. So what is the point? Well the point is to go to level 50, by the way never reset your specializations before getting to level 50. The point is to get to level 50, get all of the specializations you think that are useful. The most, the more useful ones will be the ones related to power, to getting star dust source and also to furnaces. Anything that helps you produce more stuff or better stuff with the furnace that's great. And so there will be items that you can put in your inventory to give you more bonuses. Like the harvest cycle, sickle, the backpack expansion, the knife and some of the other stuff. So what is the big idea? Well the big idea is that you can only have a few resets every season. But the trick is that if you do all of the quests you'll have two resets. I don't remember the exact quest that you need to do for this but it should be fairly obvious. So at level 50 you basically build everything that you can. Meaning, for example, I have the chest, the chest that will give me 64 slots. So basically you should build 20 chests that give you 64 slots. You should also build a lot of furnaces because you have the bonuses to crafting for the tungsten and other stuff. I'll have the... Stardust. 
water pumps. I think I'll have to build about 10 of these. 10 is a good number, but probably 5 will be enough. I think you should build more than you need because you might accidentally delete them or recycle them. So after I build a lot of the stuff I already have, including the inventory stuff, then I will reset only at level 50 after I build a lot of extra items that I will use, then I will reset and pick some other things. But there is also a catch. Even, even if you do this a lot of times, you might still not get the thing you want, and even if you get it, it's also a number game. So the backpack expansion can range from 40 to 80, I got the lowest one which is 40, but I can buy a better one, so don't worry too much about it, because you can buy, I think you can also buy the generators, the crits and some of the other stuff if people are selling, I'm not sure about this one, but definitely you can buy the stuff that can be put in the backpack, for example I bought a solar drill that gives me increased yield to everything, and guess what? Having 100% more gold or silver or stardust ore when mining and instant mining that never needs to be refilled is amazing. So this thing will never run out, so you only need to buy one. I bought two by accident. <laughs> but the durability will self-restore when it's sunny outside. Hooray for the sun, right? Right. So just build everything you need in multiple quantity and then reset. The only thing you really really need in the specialization screen, like I said, the other stuff you can buy or is not so important, is, in my opinion, Stardust water pump, or the Stardust source created by mixing fuel, and I think I said, I don't remember the exact recipe. The idea is that you need a way to produce Stardust source in your base. This will require a few materials, this is not free, nothing is really free in the game, except for basic resources. What do I mean by that? Create 80 Stardust source, I'll need a battery. Battery will cost me this stuff. The, the problem will be the rubber, because you will not have a lot of rubber, so you'll need to farm for the rubber itself, which is a bit annoying. But you should have enough for two guns and two armor sets if you do it the right way. This thing over here, as you can see, I only have 1000 less, but you can also just simply straight up buy it with the energy link, so again, don't worry about it. And the other item is the gold and the silver bars. As you can see, I have not a lot of silver, but a lot of gold. If you make the gold or silver bars, you can sell them to the NPC vendors and get a lot of energy links. So, the ones that you should always get and always keep, a way to produce Stardust Source and the ability to produce the gold or silver bars. Team number 4, Acid. Acid is the most important resource in the game, but don't worry too much about it. You can also do random events in the Red Sands or Black Heart regions. I actually see one over there. What are those random events? Well. That's the blue ball event. You go there and you can only do 5 every day. If you do more than 5, you'll not be able to get the rewards. They'll give you us and some other good stuff. <clears throat> but you can also just switch the servers around for the events. So, switch from 1 to 10, to the Chiron event, to the digging event, to the swamp event, and to the tower head event. That, that has a nice reward and they're pretty fast to do. But some of them will only be obtainable in the end game, and some of them will only be obtainable if you have multiple people doing it, like the Chiron. So don't worry too much about acid, you don't need to set up acid farming. So, I mean, I saw some guides where people tell you, you have to set up acid farming, you have to do it, you have to, and then you don't have to do it. You will have a lot of things to do to get acid in the end game, and besides, the bullets that you craft will not need as much acid anyway. And they also change it so you get a lot more gunpowder from the Rosetta units and some other stuff, so Acid economy is not as bad as it was in the betas, so don't worry too much about it. In number 5, power management. Let's go all over, let's go over all of the options. This is one of the tricky things. If you don't plan on playing a lot in the endgame, don't worry about it. The infrastructure stuff is kind of hard to unlock and you can go over here to the advanced generators, which is kind of like the one you need. Depending on your specializations, you might not need it, you might... Actually, from my one, which is 10, 10 more power for each solar generator, is not really needed because the big ones will give me 35. Oh no, 30, sorry about that, 30 power. So, there is a bit of a catch when you are building the other ones. Let me show you the catch. This requires biomass, I don't like it, I don't think I'll ever use it, but you can use it in case you don't want to have too much hassle. 
solar generators don't produce a lot, but as you can see, if you have the 10 plus, that means this will produce 25 and this will produce 30. Hydraulic generator needs to be in the water. Again, don't worry too much about your base location, just put it whatever, wherever you like. And then you have the deviation generator. The deviation generator is basically something that you can only build in the pollution zone. What is the pollution zone? Well, this as you can see doesn't work. It will work over here. So you can actually build your base in a zone that is polluted, but only in one part of your base. So build the generator in the part of your base that is polluted. But otherwise, again, don't worry too much about it because there are a lot of stuff that will help you. For example, you can have the deviance that increase your power supply. You can also, again, I don't want to get into details. Just don't stress too much about it because if you're not going to use that much power, you're only going to need a few turrets and a few pumps. And that's it. Very easy to do. And you can also build switches. What are the switches? Well, basically you can switch off power to certain things. So, for example, when you're online in the gilu, game, you gilu. can stop gilu, gilu. the pumps. When you're doing the Stardust purification, you can stop the energy from all over your base and just activate the turrets. When you're going offline, just stop the energy for, from things like the electric stove or the furnaces. And just leave the pumps on. Oh yeah, you can manage your power very very easy. Don't worry too much about it. Tip number six. And this is one of the, the more important ones. How to choose a build, a proper build for your character. Well, luckily the game helps us a lot with this. My recommendation would be for you to look at all of the blueprints and select a gun you like. If you like revolvers, don't worry, you can use one of these. Now, there are a lot of things you have to read about them. So I recommend you read everything related to the blueprints weapon and armor so you can kind of see what works better for you. You can also just look at what this stuff does. Again, if you're playing on PvE, it doesn't matter what you choose. If you're playing in PvP, just choose something that will deal more damage, but it's not the most important thing. So let me show you what I picked and how I basically made my decision. I like rifles that hit harder. I also choose one of the AKs. Again, everything is viable in the game currently and if you make a good build, it doesn't matter. You'll still do more or less the same DPS. The difference will... I mean, there's not a lot of PvE in the game anyway, and players will die if you shoot them, and mass PvP is always going to be chaotic, so don't, don't worry too much about it. Look at this. You have a power search build, so press J. The developers have so many quality of life things in the game, like I said. And here you'll... See everything you need to know. So you will have key gear, which is basically a mandatory item that you need to make the build work. So Mephi goggles, weapon mod, and armor mod. So pretty straightforward, right? Right. So how do I choose all of that? Also, you'll get some stuff for free while playing the game. From all of the locations you finished, you'll get a lot of blueprints. So going to armor crafting, it says I need the Mephi goggles. Got it? We'll make them. And as for the other five. Armor pieces, well, it's pretty easy. I just use the Falcon set. And for the last two, I use the boots and the mask of the lone wolf. They look kind of decent and a bit weird. But the idea is that you can swap out builds very, very, very easy if you build like this. Now, you can also get one of the harder sets, but the bonuses of the sets is going to be very, how should I put it, very situational and you might not understand what it does or how to use it. For example, you can use, let's say, a Renegade set with all of the items, but the problem is that if you have everything up to 4, some of the stuff will not be that useful. Again, I'm not going to details, but this is kind of like the best way to do it without too much hassle, and besides, you will not really have a lot of Stark or Chrome, because you will unlock everything directly, you don't want to gamble for stuff. Well, at least not for now. So over here, press G, the blueprint shop. So as you can see, you can buy the recipe for a gun. And also for a few set items, but you don't have a lot of it, so you're probably going to build a, a legendary gun with a full set of legendary gear if you like, but even if you don't have that, you can still build some crazy stuff. Don't worry too much about it, because you can also improve the blueprints. It's a, it's a thing that some people probably will not like, because this is where you see a few problems. You can buy the same blueprints or you can do it a couple of times. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. The point is that 
you can enhance the blueprint with lower quality blueprints to make it stronger. But the problem with stuff like this is that it will not work for your end game stuff very well. I don't have anything for that because it's a higher quality. Again, don't worry too much about it. Just know that you can make some blueprints a lot better. But not that much better to be honest. And then just play with what you like. Tip number 7. Oh yeah, like oh, I forgot to show you the mods as well. So it's actually very easy to get the mods you want because you will be using some of the other end game resources. So doesn't really matter what you put over here, just put something related to it. Also, you might not like a, an item related to your build. So for example, this one it sounds good in theory, but if you're going to do more PvP, you probably want this one. So more chances. Also, this is a bit deceptive because if you have a lower chance to trigger the power surge. Hitting two enemies, that means you will actually hit less power surges per round spent. So, I recommend you use this one. It's also based on what you get. There will be also armor modes, but most of the time you can put something on your helmet which will be from the shop. So, don't worry about it. I'll show you the shop next. Well, after this tip. Also, you can don't forget to put some defensive modes because you will be killed super fast. Even with my character, I have what? 12,000 HP, I'll be killed in PvP in less than one second. Tip number 8, attachments. So how do attachments work? Like I said, just look at the list on the interactive map and then use whatever you want and go and get it. Well, I don't want to get into too many details, but guns have four main things. Basically, range needs to be pretty good. Reload speed needs to be good depending on what you're using. But most people would like to play with stability and accuracy. So let me give you a little example. As you can see, I'm having things that increase my range, but this reduces my stability, so probably I should change that. I don't need that much range. Let me see. I guess we can leave this so you can see how it is. Stability increase. Stability and mobility and aiming speed. So you can basically max out the stat a little better. So for example, you can have a lot of aiming speed, you can have a lot of mobility, a lot of stability. What I don't recommend you do is go for the balance build. There are no really there is no really balanced build in this game. So for example, for my gun, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to go left and right faster like this? Do you want a scope on your gun? Do you want to aim and shoot like it's a laser beam? Depends on what you want, but basically with a lot of stability you can hip fire. It's easy to hip fire. Just remember that with the sniper rifles, depending on what you choose, you can basically do something like this. And this is how people kill you with sniper rifles. They just have the right attachments. So imagine you have the attachments for long range on a pistol. That will definitely do a lot of damage. And you can also recraft a weapon using certain blueprints. Again, you, you get this by dismantling weapons you find and then getting the blueprints on some of them. And then you go to calibration and then you can replace the calibration attributes with something else. Eh, that doesn't matter. So as you can see, this gun will fire faster. And also do more elemental damage. So that's the build I choose. So yeah, it, there is a lot of details you can do. I'll have to also do a separate video for this as well. For the sniper rifle, for example, you don't need that much stability, you can choose some other stuff. For example, accuracy is very important. Range, you have so much range, you don't really need more. Some more accuracy. You also have a 4, or 4 or an 8 by scope. The 4 is of course for close quarter combat almost. Yeah, it also depends on what you like. Guys, this will give you more stability, this will give you more range. I recommend you go for stability as well over here a little bit. Magazine, I don't have anything unlocked for that. So let's do this a little bit. Okay. Depending on what you improve, you can actually have a much easier time playing the game. Again, just get, in my opinion, get all of the attachments and just play around with them and see what the main... At Attachment stat will be for you. Might be stability, might be a combination of all of them, might be another one like accuracy or reload speed. Don't worry too much about it. Now, 
Hip number 9. Blueprints. I don't want to get into too many details, but... It's actually a very cool system over here that we have. The house blueprint. You also have a few presets you can use for the truck and for the other stuff. So yeah, actually use these if you want. You can also make up a shop in this and use them. Exquisite villa or the small tower. Probably people just choose the small tower. The small tower is kind of like the best in my opinion. Exquisite villa is too much building stuff. Again, some people might like it, some people might not like it. Draft. Add blueprint. Single building. You can save a single building, meaning you can have multiple buildings, like you can have a little tower, you can have a little base over here, you can have a little kitchen, so you can do a lot of stuff with a single thing. But did you know that you can also use this for adding the blueprints to other players? Again, I don't want to get into too many details, but you can just go to a player house that you like, copy the blueprint, build it like that. Some people are upset with this because people are using their builds, I don't know, I don't care. Just know that you have a lot of ways to build your base with the blueprints and some of the other stuff. In the end game, I recommend you do it. So this is also uh, team number uh, 9.5. You only want to build stuff in the end game, in my opinion, because even if you have a lot of stuff built, you don't know how much room you need. For example, you can build up to 20 isolation units, so make space for that as well. This is why I didn't bother building my base in the beginning of the game, because I didn't know how much space I would need. So. Then in the end game with your generators, with your stuff, as you can see, you will have about, I don't know, maybe I'll have 10 securement units over here, and that's red light, blue light, you can put whatever, because some of them will require the light, some of them will require the music. So, it will be a lot of moving back and forth in the end game, just use one of the preset buildings or copy a player base if you like, and then just move everything inside, it's super easy. So, basically, you will need unlock most of the stuff over here to be able to use the game at its most and use all of the features. You will not have enough points to unlock everything. So I kind of recommend you skip some of this stuff from the synthesis bench. Some of the cooking, some of the stuff from here with the turrets. Again, depends on a lot of other stuff. Now, let's go over to team number 10. Materials, the end game resources, the stellar planulas and the... I already forgot the flower. Let's go over here. This also will show you how a lot of other things work, like I mentioned. Now, this is going to be related to the player vending machines. In the end game, everyone just goes to this last base over here, the last NPC base, and just puts up their machines where you can buy a lot of useful stuff. And this is why I said you don't need to get all of the specialties perfectly. Wow, that was very low FPS for a reason. So you can buy materials. Oh, they're selling acid? Yeah, 85. <laughs> like, why would you farm acid only to sell it for energy links later? Yeah. yeah that's, that's a bad one. Yeah, this is more creative over here. Okay, so what can you buy from this stuff? Like I said, you can buy the... Uh, oh, see, you can also buy the compost bins. With the plus. So this is an enhanced compost bin. It's not a usual one. When it's in backpack, it turns one to three portions of spoiled food into mushrooms or fertilizer every 10 minutes. But that's also going to be a massive improvement. I, I guess I should buy one as well. Active... Active carbon filter. You can basically take water out of anywhere and it will give you some drinking water. The solar drill, the one I have. Super important to buy the solar drill. Also, some of the food will give you some really, really interesting things. As you can see, some people just have bonuses to other stuff. Oh, wow. Shaposaurus. Nice. Again, I don't want to get into too many details, but as you can see, you can buy most of the things from the players as well. And we are speaking about the endgame materials. I think I have spoken enough about the star chrome. We have stellar planulas and sproutlets. What are the sproutlets? Basically the sproutlets are the stuff you get from two events. It says you get them from Highway Pursuit, but I haven't seen that event. Or from the Cargo Brawl. Which is the one where you just down a track and then attack. 
So what can you get? Well, you can get more stuff to get more rewards from dungeons, but you can also get acid. Acid is super, super cheap, as you can see. Look at that. So you can get 100 acid for doing a single event. You can get 200 sprout rates from a cargo scramble pretty easy. But you can also get the stuff you need for your gun. So for example, power surge. Let me see. What is that one? I guess if I buy it, it doesn't show it over here, but I definitely bought one of them. This will be a super good mod for your gun. Then you also have a super good mod for your uh, for your helmet. Now, depends what you found and how lucky you are, but I, it will always be a gun and a helmet mod. So as you can see, this one will be much better than what I have equipped on my helmet. I'm not sure if it will actually do the power surge two times because you can find other way. Well, I guess this is a good idea. I'll have to test it out in some of the builds I do. I have the thunder clap mod on another thing. Yeah, I have a thunder clap on my mask mod. So if I buy it for the helmet as well, would it apply two thunder claps when I hit an enemy twenty times? After triggering, oh, after triggering power surge 20 times, the next it will... Yeah, interesting, interesting, very, very interesting. You might also get something like this, and you can also improve it in the mods. Hands. But don't waste it, you'll be very, very unlucky if you just get a better one as soon as you upgrade the other one. So, in my case, I'd probably have to get the Thunderclap mod for the mask as well. Look at the damage. Power surge damage, power trigger, power surge trigger chance, damage on targets with power surge, power surge critical damage, element damage, shock damage. This is amazing. You will do so much more damage with your gun with this one, so I need to buy that one as well. And over here the stellar planulas, which are basically used to get star chrome. But also to get some attachments. I recommend you just buy all of the attachments or buy all of the Star Chrome crates. You'll not have enough resources to buy all of them, so I would recommend you go for the crates first of all, and then for the other stuff. And that's basically all you need to know. Also, another end game material will be the stuff you get for the well, and the Mitsuko's mark or whatever. Yeah, in the season shop you can spend them. Now there are some things you can buy that will help you in the beginning a little bit, like a better bed, but the toy. The toy is used to make the deviants happy, the bed is used to regenerate faster, but there is the jelly slime, which will make resting a lot easier as well. This is what you'll be spending all of your starlings. You see the last crate is 100,000, so I think you should have about 500,000 energy links at the end of the season. So you can buy the Star Chrome crates, so you can upgrade your existing blueprints, or just unlock every blueprint. You can also get more cosmetics from here, some stuff from over here. Anyway, don't think too much about it, and have fun with the game.